Okay, I swear to God we aren't trying to give you whiplash. This just keeps happening! Seriously, there was nothing this week. How is this gonna work? Well, let's get this show on the road, I guess. Maybe we can ramble a bit to pad things out. Maybe. Anyway, sup, guys? Hi, everyone! Hope you're ready to tune in and probably out very quickly. I'm Rila. I'm Riley. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Bulletin, Bulletin Weekly. Weekly! Wait, there's another Matrix movie on the way? Yep. Did the last two not teach them their lesson? Evidently not. Especially when you consider that, according to the guy behind it, the new movie won't be a reboot. So they plan to somehow expand on those last two dumpster fires. Are they at least doing what Terminator's doing and ignoring the bad ones? Doubt it. Well, as long as they figure out why the last two didn't work, I guess they can still salvage something and make this one work. Meh. What... What do you mean, meh? You really gonna make me say it? Well, when you put it like that, I am. The first one wasn't that great either. You know, sis, if the channel were bigger, I'd swear you were on a one-woman mission to brutally murder the comments section. So I have unpopular opinions, sue me. So, we finally got a Cloak and Dagger trailer. And? Uh, it was alright. It was cheesy as hell, and not in a comic booky fun way. More of a teen melodrama way. But I can't really say anything about it looked bad, per se. On the contrary, some pieces of it looked interesting. Honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing them in the costumes. Don't know why, I've just always liked their look, even though I never read the comic. I doubt we're gonna get anything resembling Dagger's comic getup. Cloaks is a little more forgiving, but this is aimed at teens. And teens tend to look down on the costumes. Probably part of the stigma teens have about looking silly and the obsession with looking cool. Uh, Riley, have you looked in the mirror lately? You don't exactly go out of your way to stand out all that much. Not compared to you, no. Touché. In Comic Land, it looks like Venom is finally gonna meet Spider-Man. Uh, Riley? Oh, not that one. The other one. The boring one. Miles. Seriously? Are you trying to kill our comment section before it even becomes a thing? What is with you and just saying controversial stuff? Hey, cut me some slack. You have any idea how many stories I cut for fear of making someone cry? Ha! You don't care about making people cry. Okay, so anyway, Venom number three is gonna see Eddie Brock finally cross paths with Miles Morales. Oddly enough, they'd never met before. Granted, Eddie did just get the symbiote back, but still. So what's the big deal? If they've never met, then they wouldn't have a problem with one another, right? Or would Venom hate Miles just because he decided to take on the Spider-Man name? Because that'd be really petty, even for him. Actually, no. The exact opposite of all that. Miles is the one who has a problem with Eddie. Huh. That's unexpected. Kind of. Well, the Venom from the Ultimate Universe was indirectly responsible for getting Miles' mom killed. A cop accidentally shot her, trying to shoot the symbiote. A cop... tried to shoot... Venom. Really? Really? Yeah, well, it won't surprise me at all if Miles is the one who brings this to blows, is all I'm saying. Quick gaming story here, Brigitte is finally live on Overwatch. So, how are you enjoying her? Playing her has been fine. I'm sensing a but. But I am now reminded why I absolutely hate when the new heroes are added, especially when they're supports. I swear to God, if I get one more Brigitte on my team who tries to play as a main tank, I'm gonna scream. Hey, dumbass, you're a support. Do your goddamn job and support your team. Ugh. People playing as a team in the team shooter? <laughs> Blasphemy. Or the people who stubbornly run Brigitte against comps that absolutely shred her. Why? Why can you not just play something that won't lose you the game? Is it really that hard? Oh, I'm being ignored. I mean, it's almost as bad as the DPS Moira thing that's still happening. Or Anazu can't aim worth a damn. Seriously? If you're that inept, just pick Lucio or Mercy. Why is that so hard? Have I mentioned that she loves this game? Really? Japan time! So right on the heels of that last episode, we've got us a short teaser of the upcoming Dragon Ball Super movie. And of course, this being the internet, people lost their collective minds. 
on both sides. Some people were immediately lampooning it for the different animation style. And others were saying it was the best teaser ever and there was no way the movie could do any wrong. So, here's the thing. I hate to rain on everyone's parade, but... No. Just no. Let's just get this out of the way. The animation looks incredible. If you have a problem with the art style, well, that's a you problem. But the animators have said that the Yamamoto style was really hard to draw. So if this makes things easier for them to deliver on some slick animation, I am down. But in the words of Android 16, sorta. Let's not get crazy. The teaser was a pretty standard one for a Japanese project. A tiny bit of animation that tells you next to nothing and some funky 3D text to look all epic and stuff. Sure, there's plenty we can speculate about, but the teaser is only 30 seconds long, guys. <laughs> Seriously, calm the heck down. Sure, we can speculate plenty. Goku's probably taking on another Saiyan in the teaser. Who could it be? Maybe the original Super Saiyan God? Maybe the original legendary Super Saiyan? What? Hell no, not him! Ah, there we go. Either way, guys, let's all just chill out and wait until we have a little more to go on. Cool? Cool. Last but not least, some FLCL news. Oh hell yeah! About time we got an update on this! Uh, a lot of updates, actually. Like, seriously, dude. Wow. Well, for starters, we now know the titles of both sequels. The first is FLCL Progressive. And the second is Fully Cooly Alternative. They also gave us a premiere date of June 2nd for Progressive at 11.30 on Toonami. And Alternative will premiere sometime in September. Man, this is really starting to take me back. You? <laughs> you never stayed up to watch Toonami. What? Yes, I did! No way! Mom and Dad didn't let us. I had to sneak downstairs when everyone was asleep and watch it in the dark. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, I wasn't the one afraid of the dark. Wait, you thought I was afraid of the dark? You weren't? God, no! I wasn't that much of a wimp. I was afraid of something far, far more terrifying. Which was... The Wrath of Mother. Now see, that I totally understand. Seriously, how did you never get caught? Like, not even once. Eh, it's a gift. Anyway, the titles and premiere date weren't all. They also revealed the debut dates for the theatrical release in Japan, as well as the cast. Now, we're not going to go down the entire list of cast members. But just to name a few, on FLCL Progressive, there's Megumi Hayashibara as Haruha Waharu, and Miyuki Sawashiro as Jinyu. Also, Inori Minase as Hidomi, and Jun Fukuyama as Yoshimi Ide. And for Fully Cooly Alternative, there's Mayumi Shintai as Haruhara Haruko, Karen Miyama as Kanakawamoto, Yuri Yoshida as Tomomi Heta, and Riho Ida as Hijiri Yashima. For the rest, check out the source link on the site. They also revealed a ton of staff, with slight variations between both. But some of the staff is on both sequels. There's Katsuyuki Motohiro as the chief director, and Hideto Iwai handling the scripts. Seriously, even the character design staff changes it up. Chikashi Kubota handles it in progressive, but in alternative, it's handed over to Yuichi Takahashi. Though the studio is still production IG, so there's that, I guess. Anyway, looking forward to whatever craziness this winds up being. And that's the show, guys! Phew, finally a pretty normal length episode. Right? I totally thought with so few stories, this was gonna be like five minutes long. We could have said it was a mini and called it a day. Well, I guess it's a good thing you talk a lot, huh? Ha! <laughs> Whatever. Like you're one to talk. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys! If you liked what you saw, give that like button a zap and support the show by clicking that Patreon link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Check out the site for our source links and the links to all the new releases this week. Plus a bunch of other awesome content from the guys. This has been Bulletin Weekly. I'm Rila. I'm Riley. And as always, stay, stay tuned. tuned.